30 years ago in 1988, the beer industry looked very different in the US. Only a handful of craft breweries dotted the country, and bars were dominated by just a handful of beers. But one beer absolutely dominated them all, Budweiser. Budweiser sales accounted for one in four beers sold in the United States. One in four! Now I know us humans are really bad at comprehending fractions, and one in four doesn't sound like a lot, but that stat is truly ridiculous. I looked up the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm stats for 1988, and that year US brewers fermented some 160 million barrels of beer. That means that one in four translates roughly to 40 million barrels of one single beer. To put that crazy number in perspective, that's well over 26 million barrels created by every single craft brewer in the United States today. And yet, for the single brand of beer that completely dominated a marketplace, you might be surprised to learn that today, it's just the number three selling beer and its volume has fallen down to just 13 million barrels. So what in the world is behind the fall of this historic brand? Well that's what we're going to tackle today on this episode of Beer by the Numbers. Hey everyone, this is Ryan, your resident beer nerd, and today we're talking Bud. No, not that kind of Bud. We're going to dive into Budweiser and try to figure out what could have taken down such an iconic brand. Let's get started. So, this fall from grace for Budweiser isn't totally unexpected. After all, this beer is 142 years old and was originally concocted by a couple of German immigrants in the 1870s. I don't know about you, but it's harder than you think to name brands of consumer goods that have been around since the mid-1800s. Budweiser is up there with brands like the New York Times, Remington, and Baker's Chocolate. Times sure do change, and some brands just aren't as successful as the world marches on. But for years, Budweiser held the top spot in the US until 2001 it was surpassed by its younger brother Bud Light. Bud Light was Anheuser-Busch's answer to Miller Light, which was the first light locker that became insanely popular within just a couple years of its release. Next in 2011, it was passed by Coors Light in terms of volume sold. So today we have Bud Light number one, Coors Light number two, and Budweiser in a rather distant third. The interesting thing is that none of these brands is actually growing anymore. It's more of a contest to see who is contracting the slowest. All these top beer brands are being assaulted by a series of market trends that are beginning to quell their buzz. First things first, Americans have been cutting back on their beer consumption over the past few decades. In 2017, total beer volume declined by 2.2% in the US, down to a measly 173 million barrels. Things like craft cocktails and the rise of local distilleries seem to be part of the cause of this trend, but the other big contributing factor is that many drinkers are drinking less beer in terms of volume, but more higher ABV beers. And some beer nerds are so hardcore that they have started brewing at home. In fact, the Brewers Association now reports that there are more than 1 million home brewers in the United States. Speaking of higher ABV beers, those enterprising craft brewers are also stealing a bigger slice of the overall shrinking pie, taking away business from brands like Budweiser. Domestic competitors are not the only source of strife for the huge brewer either. Foreign brands are also seeing success in the United States at the expense of Budweiser. Brands like Corona, Modelo, and Heineken are all enjoying a resurgence of popularity in the minds of drinkers, and those drinkers are out looking to try something new. AB InBev has also left Budweiser behind a bit when it comes to marketing in favor of other core brands in its portfolio like Bud Light, Stella, Bush, and Michelob Ultra and they're seeing some success with that strategy. Last year, Michelob Ultra, which is marketed mostly as being low-cal and low-carb, grew a whopping 21% over their previous year. Budweiser also appears to be struggling in the marketing department as well. For the past seven or eight years, Bud has been working almost exclusively with the marketing firm Anomaly. Anomaly is a fairly prominent ad agency working with many consumer brands like Beats or Minute Maid, 
and they have been helping Budweiser with all their large campaigns like their past six Super Bowl ads and bringing back the Clydesdales. But this year's Super Bowl ad had a very different tone, and a few weeks later we learned why. Budweiser said they were moving to a project-based approach to marketing moving forward. Which is business speak for we're not in an exclusive relationship with Anomaly anymore. Their Super Bowl ad this year, instead of focusing on the brand or the tradition behind Budweiser, they focused on their disaster relief efforts. They helped out this year by canning and shipping water to help after several large storms hit the United States and the Caribbean. And while this is a great thing for any brewer to do for those in need, it didn't quite resonate super well with consumers, and was largely forgettable in the sea of other great Super Bowl ads. But in the end, none of these trends are the single cause of Bud's decline. Budweiser just isn't finding a solid home in the modern beer marketplace. Consumers are looking for things that are new and exciting, and beers that push the envelope a little bit. Not a tried and true favorite. Variety seems to be the spice of life these days, and Budweiser just doesn't quite fit that mold anymore. So there you go, beer nerds. The beer that once dominated bars and homes across the United States is now an old gunslinger riding off into a golden sunset. What do you think of these changing times? Do you yearn for the simpler days where you didn't have to try to narrow down your beer choice from a list of 40 plus taps in a craft beer bar? Let me know in the comments section below. While you're down there, be sure to click the link that takes you to the Beer By The Numbers Facebook page. We are building a great community of beer nerds over there, and you don't want to miss out on all the great beer conversations we're having. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer By The Numbers, and I'll see you next week with more great beer content.